Hello, everyone. Today, I will introduce EGFR signaling pathway. Epidermal growth factor receptor EGFR, or herb one human epidermal growth factor receptor, HER-1, is a transmembrane protein which is the receptor of the ligands from EGF family. EGFR is a 170K to glycoprotein with tyrosine kinase activity. It is composed of a single polypeptide of 1,186 amino acid residues that is cleaved from a 1,210 residue polypeptide precursor. It has its own modular structure, it contains an extracellular ligand binding domain, a transmembrane region and a cytoplasmic tyrosine kinase region that is flanked by non-catalytic regulatory regions. EGFR plays a crucial role in initiating the signaling that directs the behavior of epithelial cells and tumors of epithelial origin. Human EGF is a 53AA polypeptide, whose molecular weight is 6-keta. EGF can stimulate the cell growth and differentiation by binding to its receptor, EGFR. EGFR consists of an extracellular ligand binding region and an intracellular tyrosine kinase region. The extracellular component consists of two ligand binding domains, L1, L2, and two cysteine-rich regions, CR1, CR2 responsible for proper positioning of the ligand binding domains. Upon ligand binding, the receptor assumes an elongated untethered conformation and subsequently dimerizes with another EGFR. Upon dimerization, the tyrosine kinase TK, domain becomes activated and autophosphorylates the receptor. The phosphorylated carboxy terminus becomes a docking site for downstream signaling proteins, which are themselves phosphorylated to promote signaling activation. EGFR signaling pathway is one of the most important pathways in mammalian cells, which regulate a series of important events including proliferation, migration, differentiation, apoptosis, as well as those that regulate intercellular communication during development. Mutation in the certain component in this pathway will cause human cancer. So it has been considered as an ideal therapeutic target. EGF is a signaling proteins which have SRC homology to SH2 or phosphotyrosine binding PTB domains can bind to the EGFR family members after tyrosine phosphorylation. One of these signaling proteins is P52SH2 domain containing alpha-2 collagen-related protein SHC, which is an adapter protein. Both the amino terminal SH2 domain and the carboxy terminal PTB domain of SHC can be used to bind to the tyrosine phosphorylated EGFR family members. SHC also becomes tyrosine phosphorylated after binding to the EGFR. And then another adapter protein comes in called growth factor receptor binding protein 2 which can bind to the tyrosine phosphorylated SHC as well as the tyrosine phosphorylated EGFR family members. Besides the SH2 domain, GRB2 also has two SRC homology 3 SH3 domains which can bind to the proline-rich PXXP motifs. They are responsible for the constitute relation of GRB2 with carboxy terminal PXXP motifs present in SOS1 which is the member of the son of seven list family of guanine nucleotide exchange factors GEFs. Recruitment of SOS1 to the activated DGFR makes it into close proximity with the members of P21RAS family of guanine nucleotide binding proteins. Isoforms of P21RAS family are activated by binding to GTP rather than GDP. So they can be activated by the SOS1 because it has the ability to exchange GDP bound to the P21RAS family members with GTP. Subsequently, Activated P21 RAS family members activate the members of RAF family of kinase, which consists of ARAF, BRAF and RAF1. Then the RAF family members will activate the mitogen activated extracellular signal regulated kinase ERK activating kinase MEC family, which includes MEC1 and MEC2, through phosphorylating regulatory residues of these kinases. The well-established traditional function of EGFR is known to transmit extracellular mitogenic signals, such as EGF and transforming growth factor alpha. TGF alpha, through activating a number of downstream signaling cascades. These include signaling modules that involve phospholipase C gamma, RAS, and phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase, PI3K. Most cellular stress stimuli cause EGFR arrested non degraded evendosomes, where the receptors have both kinase signaling and kinase independent functions. The inactive EGFR is arrested at endosomes upon stress via a protein-protein interaction with an endosomal protein lysosomal associated protein transmembrane 4-beta, LAPTM4b. An exocyst is then recruited and facilitates EGFR-mediated run domain Biclin-1 interacting and cysteine-rich containing protein, Rubicon, disassociation from the Biclin-1 complex, 
which releases Beclin 1 from Rubicon inhibition and activates autophagy initiation. In addition, the concentration of EGF also will be regulated by CD and GK endocytosis. At low doses of EGF, EGFR is largely internalized through CD endocytosis, which primarily results in receptor recycling and sustained signaling. At high doses of EGF, a substantial fraction of EGFR is internalized through graft-dependent GK endocytosis, which primarily targets internalized receptors to degradation, causing signal attenuation. Under the latter condition, CBL is recruited to and ubiquitolates phosphorylated EGFRs. This post-translational modification enhances physical interactions between EGFR and GROF to promote GK endocytosis of the receptor. The epithermal growth factor receptor, EGFR, belongs to the herb family of receptor tyrosine kinases, RTK. These transmembrane proteins are activated following binding with peptide growth factors of the EGF family of proteins. Evidence suggests that the EGFR is involved in the pathogenesis and progression of different carcinoma types. The EGFR and EGF-like peptides are often overexpressed in human carcinomas, and in vivo and in vitro studies have shown that these proteins are able to induce cell transformation. Amplification of the EGFR gene and mutations of the EGFR tyrosine kinase domain have been recently demonstrated to occur in carcinoma patients. Moreover, the EGFR is increasingly recognized as a biomarker of resistance in tumors, as its amplification or secondary mutations have been found to arise under drug pressure. EGFR is capable of binding several different extracellular ligands that activate the receptor leading to activation of several downstream signaling events including, but no limited to those listed. Several therapeutics have been developed to antagonize EGFR including monoclonal antibodies that block ligand binding as well as several different kinase inhibitors. All of the listed therapies are FDA approved for various cancers with the exception of neratinib. That's all. Thank you. If you want to learn more, please load our website, www.creativediagnostics.com.